Live. 25 Sports brings you exclusive Bradley basketball. Tonight, Bradley enters the postseason against the Eagles of Eastern Michigan in the first round of the 1995 National Invitation Tournament. Bradley basketball is brought to you in part by John Beer's Ford Nissan Jeep and Eagle, the price leader in central Illinois. By Uftring Chevrolet Old Saab Geo, Central Illinois' largest Chevrolet Olds dealer. By OSF St. Francis Medical Center, a commitment to life. By your trusted men of olds retailers. By Ameritech, your link to better communication. And by your local Ford dealers. The curtain's about to go up on the postseason and on court performance, if you will, and the Bradley Braves will play in Peoria against Eastern Michigan. Hello and welcome to first round action in the National Invitational Tournament. Lee Hall along with Roger Fegley. And Roger, for the Bradley Braves, this is a repeat performance. Their second straight trip to the NIT. They almost made it to Broadway last year, losing in the quarterfinals. The guy to keep an eye on for BU is point guard Billy Wright. Well, you're right, Lee. And one thing that you really expect your better players to do is step it up at tournament time. Billy has done a great job the last four or five games, shooting over 57% from the field, handling the club real well on the transition game. And that's just another aspect when he scores 11 points like he has that Bradley has to look forward to. Several scoring stars for Eastern Michigan making their first NIT appearance. One guy to watch, though, tonight is Kareem Carpenter, the kind of guy that gives Bradley problems. Well, you're exactly right there about giving Bradley problems. Bradley has struggled all year along with that big, bulky center. Kareem Carpenter is a very, very good one, and Bradley will really have to keep him away from the boards tonight. It's opening night in the NIT. We will have tonight's starting lineups as Bradley hosts Eastern Michigan in just a minute. And welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria. It's Bradley against Eastern Michigan, round one of the National Invitation Tournament. Well, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Eagles, they come into this ball game 20 and nine. They finished 12 and six in the MAC. It's Derek Dial at one forward, along with the guy we highlighted in the open, Kareem Carpenter. At center, it's Theron Wilson, and at the guards, Brian Tolbert. And little Earl Boykins, only 5-5 for the Bradley Braves. There's their leading scorer from a year ago, Deion Jackson getting the start, along with David Winslow at the forwards. Bio Akinkale getting the start at center. And at the guards, point guard Billy Wright, Anthony Parker, the only Brave to start every game this season. And the band is here from Eastern Michigan making the trip all the way down from Ypsilanti. It's the Eagles and the Braves. We'll have the tip off coming up from Peoria in just a minute. And welcome back to Peoria. It's Bradley 19 to nine taking on Eastern Michigan as they announce the starting lineups here. The Eagles picked to finish fourth in the MAC, finished third, lost to Ball State in the finals of the MAC tournament. Bradley picked to finish second in the Missouri Valley Conference, finished fourth, and lost to Tulsa in the semifinals of the Missouri Valley Conference tournament in St. Louis. Tulsa, of course, going on to the NCAA tournament, as did the winner of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, Southern Illinois. Eastern Michigan lost to Ball State. Ball State lost today in the first round of the NCAA. Roger Fegley, uh, when you look at the statistics of these two teams, there's, uh, there's a lot of similarities and things look pretty even. Oh, I think you're exactly right. I think it's going to be a really interesting game. These teams have never played each other. Coaches have never coached against each other. So what they have to go on on short notice in a tournament like this is maybe a quick game film that someone has sent to them or what they've heard through the grapevine. And uh, But on paper, I think you're right. Teams are very similar. Uh, both teams will probably like to try and push the ball a little bit up the floor. They'll, Bradley will obviously try to work the ball inside. Uh, should be a great game. Let's talk uh, a little bit about some of the keys uh, for tonight's ball game. Well, I think Bradley really has to uh, rebound. Eastern Michigan is a terrific rebounding team. Bradley not nearly as strong through the course of the season on the boards as the, the Eagles are. That'll be a big key. Bradley has to also be smart in transition. 
you know, about two thirds of the way through the season, Jim made a commitment to go to a kind of a three guard offense. What that's done is allowed them to push the ball up the floor a little quickly, or a little quicker than they were earlier in the year. But they got to make that good decision. First ever meeting between the Braves and the Eagles. It's Bio Akinkale making his seventh start of the season. Jumping center against Theron Wilson, and the Eagles control the tap. Eastern Michigan will work against the Bradley man-to-man. -man. This is Brian Tolbert, leading scorer, 17 points a game. Misses his first attempt. Good penetration, the first time down. Eastern Michigan really got the ball close in the lane. Got a pretty good shot for them. One of the things Bradley's going to have to do is defend those guards out front and not let them get that penetration. David Winslow gets Bradley on the board, the senior from Atlanta. And you probably didn't expect David Winslow to hit the first shot from 15 feet of the game, but uh, David's been playing better lately. Hasn't played a lot of minutes, but he's made nice contributions in his last four or five games. One thing Bradley is counting on tonight, they believe that they will defend Eastern Michigan better than they've been defended this year. Billy Wright, Bradley's point guard, picks up his first foul against little five foot five inch Earl Boykins. There's Jim Molinari, the head coach of the Bradley Braves in his fourth year here in Peoria. Well, what Bradley's really gonna have to do, and we got a chance to talk with the coaching staff a little bit yesterday, is they're going to have to try and defend one against one because what Eastern Michigan has shown a tendency to do is if they can't come down and get something quick right off the offense one of the three outside people is probably going to break down and go one on one two times down both times they've gotten penetration one time the first time created a very good shot the second time Billy Wright was beaten and had a foul from behind Earl Boykins five foot five freshman from Cleveland misses his second free throw attempt he's a 71 percent free thrower and it's 2 1 we played a minute inside a pink away Boy, a nice pass from uh, the chainsaw at the high post that high low pass bio hadn't played a lot of minutes lately but Looked really confident catching that ball, just spinning on the baseline. Averages just two points a game, and he gives Bradley a 4-1 lead. Wakens and Wright, that's a good matchup at point guard. Now Tolbert against Anthony Parker. Shot clock down to 10. This is where Bradley really wants to pick up the defense even more. Four on the shot clock, three. The three-point attempt off the back of the rim, no good. So a desperation attempt by Eastern Michigan, and here comes Bradley. Deion Jackson takes it to the hole, and we've got a foul, I believe, away from the ball. No, it was a foul on Deion's drive. The foul goes against Derek Dial. That's his first. You know, one matchup problem in Eastern Michigan really has to give a lot of thought to and probably has is Who's going to guard Deion Jackson and Anthony Parker? The Eagles are fairly small. They're three guys they play on the perimeter. And with this lineup, a pretty good lineup for Bradley, moves Deion and Anthony both outside. They've got quite a height advantage at that wing spot. Over for three. Missed his first attempt, but is solid on the second, and he ties the game at four. Got a nice-looking stroke, too. You know he can shoot the three-point shot, 33% during the, during the season. And you've got to be aware of him to step out and guard him. Anthony Parker answers. At the other end, he'll go to the line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, we talked about that. Again, Parker and Jackson both will have a size advantage on the uh, Eastern Michigan wing players. And Anthony got inside there and made a pretty creative shot. Anthony Parker, 14 points, six and a half rebounds a game. He leads Bradley in both categories. And we talked and about in the opening how you want players to step up at tournament time. Anthony's averaging 19 points, up to four or five points from the season average. Shooting the ball real well and really going to the, to the boards a lot lately, averaging over six and a half rebounds a game. Here's Kareem Carpenter, physical inside player off the glass and off about three bodies as well. well that's just sheer strength there. Probably could have gotten a foul to go along with the basket. Just shows his ability to get the ball down low and create space with those big wide shoulders. This is Winslow, not a scorer, misses his second attempt and Bradley will reload with a new shot clock. Inside, a Akinkale. 
Turnaround jumper no good. Rebound, Eastern Michigan had it, but Bradley comes up with it. Parker for three. And now it's Jackson. And the foul by the junior. Well, you know, rebounding was at the top of the list on the things to do in the Bradley locker room. And Bradley really hustling on those offensive boards there. Got three or four chances. When you get that many chances, good things are going to happen. Here's Carpenter. Has to go through three or four Bradley Braves, and now it's Billy Wright the other way. Jackson, a nice pass, but Parker can't hit the reverse way. Boy, Kareem Carpenter made it around David Winslow, but there were three or four Braves there with the help defense. Great recognition. You know what I like, too, is Bio in a game, a shot blocker in his own right. He's not playing against Carpenter, so when Carpenter makes his move and spins in and gets by that first player, he's right there to pick up the slack defensively. Tolbert again for three, misses this time. <laughs> And Kareem Carpenter says, I'm too strong. And he is correct that time to foul on Winslow. You're right, that time he was correct. You see, he just fought there, out fought uh, David Winslow, got that inside spot, and David got caught trying to pull down on the arm. Carpenter and Winslow continue to talk. And they head to the bench. Bradley, a 9-6 lead. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. 15.56 to play first half. Bradley, a 9-3 lead. Four different Braves have scored, and they are not bashful about getting the ball up the floor. That's a really unselfish pass there from Deion to Anthony Parker. Anthony had his back to the basket. I bet he wishes he had that one over. That was, that's about as good a shot as you can get. One of the things we talked about uh, in the open was rebounding, and so far Bradley has more than held their own against what we consider perhaps a better rebounding team in Eastern Michigan. Well, seven to two, you're right, Bradley, with the rebounding edge early in the game. There's number five, Aaron Zobris, checking into the ball game for the first time. Three-point specialist. He shoots 47 percent behind the arc. Dwayne Funches, number 34, Ben Coupette, double zero now into the ball game. And here's Aaron Zobris coming up with the turnover. Across to Funches. And Wilson knocked it out of bounds. Boy, Funch would have looked around. He had Ben running right down the middle of the floor, and that would have been a monster dunk. All he had to do was drop it back to him, but I just don't think you see here, Anthony does a nice job in getting the ball over to him. And right down the middle of the floor, you see Ben coming all alone. Zobris puts up a three right off the bench and misses. It's Eastern Michigan the other way. They've never led in this ball game. Nice pass. Dial gives to Wilson and he's fouled by a, who I thought they were going to whistle Deion Jackson, but I think they got Aaron Zobris instead. That's by far the best ball movement that Eastern Michigan has shown there. It started with the head fake. Dion left his feet, the penetration, and then the great drop down pass right here. Good unselfish play by the Eagles. It sends Theron Wilson to the line. 6'9", 210, junior out of Royal Oak, Michigan. Makes the first. He's a 71% free thrower. Jim Molinari getting his first look ever at Eastern Michigan. Wilson makes both, and now into the ball game is Tony King. He replaces Wilson. And right away, Eastern Michigan puts on some pressure. Full court. And they have man-to-man -man full court pressure and a zone full court. Bradley breaks it. Jackson thought about it, takes it to the hole and jam. But Bradley's just gotten so much better against those Pressure defense is on the full court of attack in the basket. Dion with a super move to finish that one off. Dion with four. Boykins kicks to Dial. Three point attempt in and out. And it's King over the back. Well, ben did a pretty good job there. Ben Coupet blocked out. Got Eastern Michigan over the back. And, and that's one of the things we've talked all year about Ben not being quite strong enough to hold that position. But he got in position that time and was able to get the foul. Well, Bradley is going to have to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that they can handle the pressure. Billy Wright is not on the floor, but Anthony Parker 
can play the one position, so can Aaron Zobris. They can both bring it up. Bradley an 11-8 lead, 14-40 to play first half. This is Coupette, double team. The sophomore, no good. And the foul will go against Dwayne Funches. First on Funches, fourth team foul against the Braves. I like the position Ben got on the floor that time, received that pass, looked a little trick and a little unsure of himself putting that half hook up. There's a good match up there with Funches and Kareem Carpenter, a couple of guys that don't mind body contact, so to speak. Boykins off the glass. Well, that's a sweet move, a little guy only Five foot eight penetrated among the big guys and found an opening and slid it in. That is one thing the Bradley coaching staff is worried about. They don't want to let Boykins create and get into the lane where he penetrates and does so many good things for the Eagles. Jackson in the lane, bounces, bounces, good. Deion Jackson with six. Boy, Deion's really used that shot fake to his advantage tonight. Eastern Michigan really leaving her feet every time Deion gets the ball and fakes that shot. Tolbert almost rolls one in. He'll go to the line instead. Fouls on Anthony Parker. According to the big board, that is five team fouls on the Braves. Deion Jackson is now 23rd on Bradley's all-time scoring list with that last basket. He just passed Billy Mann. Tolbert out of Detroit, 78% free thrower. Eastern Michigan's go-to guy gets the first one. The Eagles 5-5 five and five on the road this year. And both free throws are good. Eastern Michigan back within one. Now into the ball game, Nage McCune, he replaces Tolbert. And again, the full court pressure. The double team, now Funches bringing it up to Jackson. Oh, missed the lay in, took off a little early. Good job of beating the pressure again there. I think Dion thought about passing that ball right up into the time when he tried to lay it off, and you're right, took off a little bit early and had to extend that finger roll a little further than normal. Parker misses a layup. And one of the things that Jim Molinari has commented on, if Bradley's going to push the ball up the floor, he better be able to finish, and he better be able to play defense at the other end. I don't think he's real happy with the last two possessions. A couple of opportunities for layups or dunks, and we've got nothing out of it. Eastern Michigan trying to work it inside this possession. Nice pass. That'll be the sixth team foul against Bradley. Boy, Dion just really found himself in bad defensive position that time. Standing behind uh, the player down low. Had nothing he could do but just come over the back and foul Tony King. King only a 49% free throw as you look at his numbers. Big guy originally out of Scarborough, Ontario. Now Billy Wright back into the ball game. He replaces Anthony Parker. And the second free throw rattles out. So it's still a one point Bradley lead with 12.50 to play first half. Sobris pick clean. And here comes Boykins the other way. The little guy to Wilson, no good. Gets his own rebound and jams. And right now, Eastern Michigan doing a nice job of finishing those breaks. And again, set up by the penetration of Earl Boykins. And he finds the big guy underneath for Ron Wilson. And Wilson throws it down. Misses the first one here, but they are so good on that offensive glass. Ben again finds himself in bad defensive position, can do nothing but foul. There's good quick hands coming from behind. I don't think Aaron even saw him coming. And Wilson completes the three point play off camera. It's now 15 13. And with that three point play, Eastern Michigan takes their first lead of the game. 
Braves get through the pressure. They haven't turned it over, but they also haven't scored lately. Deion Jackson, a tough shot. A tough shot, but very pretty. He's got eight. Bradley and Eastern Michigan now tied. Tolbert has it blocked out of there by Big Ben. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Eastern Michigan and Bradley tied at 15. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. Back in Peoria, Bradley and Eastern Michigan tied 15 all. Ben Coupet only playing eight minutes in his last four games, but he's making his presence felt tonight. You always like to have a little help when you're playing defense, and they always say when you go baseline, you spin them back to the middle, you'll get help. That's some big time help there. Eastern Michigan, formerly the Hurons, some folks never forget. I think I'll be politically correct here and keep my mouth closed. Braves play defense against the Eagles. Tied now at 15. Bradley led it all the way until the last minute or so, and Eastern Michigan went on a little run. Now, would anybody have thought that uh, on either side of the ledger that this was going to be an easy game had not seen the other team play? I mean, these two teams are playing very well at this point of the season and uh, very evenly matched. And I mean, it's, the table is set here with the National Invitation Tournament in the first round to be a super game, and that's what we've got so far. The winner here will play Canisius, we are told, next Monday. Funches hit all four of his shots against Evansville, but misses that one. A tough shot by Dwayne. Eastern Michigan player flew at him, really made Dwayne change that shot. It wasn't fouled, and that's just good defense. Ben just doesn't look quite at sync out there with the ball in his hand. He look, looks to be a little nervous passing the ball a little quickly through one right through Dion's hands there. But even when he's taking the ball to the basket, he seems to be making his move a little quick, and he just doesn't quite seem to be sure of himself on the offensive end. Well, we mentioned he has not played a lot. Only eight minutes in his last four games. This is Wilson. Bounces it no good, but it's Big Ben in there for the rebound. 10.40 to play first half. Deion Jackson guarded by King. Make that McCune. Boykins for playing the tight defense. That's the first on Boykins for us on the Eagles and wholesale changes for the Braves. Winslow back in as is Parker. Chad Klein, number 30, into the ballgame for the first time. He's nursing a sore right shoulder. Terry Burrell, sophomore guard, also in for the Braves. Nice. Burrell right to the hole and in. Well, Jim's been saying all along, Kerry Burrell needs to see the floor more often. And he's always been known as a terrific defensive player, but lately he's shown a little bit of offensive skill also. He hasn't played a lot lately. His minutes were up to about 14 a game, but he has not played much in the last four games. You know, this is an important time for Bradley right now with the wholesale substitution to bring in four guys cold off the bench. You know, the next two or three minutes, a lot of things can happen before they get their legs under them and break a sweat and get into the flow of the game. And Klein's left shoulder's all right. He injured his right shoulder against Tulsa, re-injured it Monday in practice and has not practiced all week. Now Bradley's run off six in a row for a four-point lead. You're watching first-round action in the National Invitation Tournament. Well, 
It's Bradley with a four-point lead. 9.27 to play first half. Right off the bench, Chad Klein nursing a sore right shoulder, but the lefty showing no ill effects here. The thing you do, you get in the game, you want to see if you're uh, going to be able to play. <laughs> It blew my theory when I said you bring in four guys at a time. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to get into the flow of the game. It took Bradley about 20 seconds for uh, Kerry Burrell to get a layup <laughs> and about 15 more for Chad Klein to bury a long one. Chad Klein, the junior out of Fortville, Indiana, has struggled with injuries his entire career. Had an appendectomy as a freshman. A stress fracture that knocked him out for a year. Bad back last year. Looking to play defense, though, against Wilson. He will be whistled for the foul. Looked like pretty good defense, but there were a lot of bodies between us and the play. Foul is on Chad Klein. His first. That's the eighth team foul. Now, Chad does a pretty good job of keeping the hands off of the offensive player to where it doesn't look obvious that he's fouling, but. He's also been known to use that lower body as a weapon. Theron Wilson is perfect at the line. He has five points. And the big fella remains perfect. Give him six. Bradley's lead now down to two. Bashful tonight, misses the three. A little bit strong with that one. It was straight on line, hit the back of the rim square. <laughs> Eastern Michigan works the ball. Silver coming off a 14 point performance in the MAC Championship game against Ball State. Has it blocked by Kerry Burrell, and here comes Billy Wright. Chased down by Theron Wilson, but it goes in. How about the quickness of Theron Wilson to catch up to him? I'll tell you what, Billy's pretty quick, and you're right. Wilson <laughs> caught him from mid mid court and almost blocked that shot. Kareem Carpenter with the walk. How about the two really nice defensive plays by Kerry Burrell. One blocking the shot, then going up the second time quickly and tipping the ball to start the break to Billy Wright. Great work by the sophomore out of Chicago, Simeon. Parker with it. Now Billy Wright thought about the three. Eight minutes to play, first half. Now Burrell almost turns it over, but gets it back to Wright with 13 on the shot clock. Chad Klein's three is no good, but it's off Eastern Michigan. It will be Bradley Ball with a new shot clock. Now Chad hit his first shot. Now he's missed two in a row from three-point range. That's a good move here. Aaron Zobers checks back into the ball game for Billy Wright. A little more offensive punch in the game for the Braves. 21-17 Braves. Parker the long three won't go. He was one for nine from three-point range in the Missouri Valley Tournament. So he has struggled of late from beyond the arc. Carpenter knocks one home. He's got four. Tell you what, he is. He's amazing down low. He can create that space and he gets the ball up through arms where it doesn't look like there's enough room to get a shot off. He doesn't jump that high. He just finds openings among the trees. Oh, Aaron Zobers not expecting the pass, the turnover by the Braves. Deion Jackson will check back in for Kerry Burrell. <laughs> So far, it's been Deion Jackson offensively for Bradley, and uh, really not a whole lot else. We get substitutions for Eastern Michigan. Boykins is back in. Number 54, Mick Panisi. Spelled M-I-K-E, pronounced Mick because he's from Australia. Uh, I think Big number 54. What I, what I think it's really important at this juncture of the game. There's seven minutes to go here in the first half. Is that? The team finds a guy that's got the hot hand. They've really got to get the ball to him. I mean, it's 
late in the first half, points are obviously at a premium. And when you find a guy like that who can get the ball in the hoop, you've got to find him. Well, David Winslow did a nice job defensively on Kareem Carter for the first couple of bumps. But he thought he had him, and he did not. Now Jackson has it stripped away. Head comes up with it. Number five just into the ball game for Eastern Michigan. Here's Tolbert for three. Won't go. And Parker with the rebound. Klein missed two in a row, but he's perfect on that one. Chad with five. And it's 24-21 Bradley. Really showing the confidence to shoot that long jump shot tonight. I'm sorry, that was only a two. Looked like a three, head. Fell to his knees. And Eastern Michigan maintains possession to the chagrin of the fans here at Bradley. Shot clock at eight. And it'll be Eastern Michigan ball with two on the shot clock. Zobris blocked the shot, and then it went out of bounds off him. Akinkale checks in now for Winslow. Both, both coaches substituting quite a bit here. Shot clock. Went off. Boykin's got the shot off in time as Carpenter and Klein hit the deck at the other end. It's Aaron Zobris with the bucket for Bradley. His first bucket of the night. Anthony Parker with a steal at midcourt and a slam. Anthony doing a great job. Read that pass, swinging it back across the top of the key. Stepped in the passing lane and got himself an easy one. 6 nothing run for Bradley. Has the fans on their feet in Peoria. Head, charge. No, they get climbed for the block. His second personal. Well, James Head went to the boards hard that time. Chad Klein has an act for sliding in and picking up charging fouls. That one there is just, you know, that's the toughest call in basketball. You got to give that guy room to come down. I don't think Chad was moving, but he may have slid in after James Head left his feet to take that shot. Our officials tonight, Bobby Vetketter, Joe O'Neill, and Steve Olson, all out of the great Midwest Conference. James head to the line. Makes his first, averaging just a little over two points a game. He's only a 44% free thrower. Five oh nine to play first half. Eastern Michigan can pull within four if he makes it, and he does. 27-23. off by Tolbert and now picked off by Zobrist. Oh. oh, if only he could jump higher. <laughs> he wanted to dunk that so bad. Carpenter had it blocked by a kink away. That's the and a foul Wilson on Wilson over the back. <laughs> That is Wilson's first, 15 foul. You know, Bio played early in the game, came over and helped out on Kareem Carpenter, made him change his shot. Again there, Carpenter turns around, Bio was there. I really think that Bio can come with his ability, his athletic ability, and give him a little bit of a problem. It's worked twice here. Parker for three. One for his last 10 from out there, but he nailed that one. And it's Bradley by nine. You and I have talked a lot over the years about the important parts of the game, the last five minutes of the first half, the first five minutes of the second half. Bradley with a run right here now. Extended that lead a little bit, has the crowd into this game with three minutes to go. Eastern Michigan has really got to settle things down and get the momentum back in their direction, play their game. 
They need a hoop right now. Bradley's on the verge of uh, popping this one for shot, big numbers. Shot clock at three. No good. Tip. And Bradley recovers. Pretty good shot. It just didn't go in. Klein for three. In and out. And I think they got Deion Jackson for the foul on the glass. They did. That will be the second on Jackson. Akinkale took a shot to the nose. I think Bale's got a bloody nose. Well, I like that shot from Chad, though. He's made a couple of them. Had a great look at the basket there, and it rolled in and out. If that ball goes in, Bradley's really on a run here. Bradley by nine, their biggest lead of the night. James Head, perfect at the line. Hey, what, he's now the best. made three in a row. He's the best looking 44% free throw shooter <laughs> I've ever seen. Head originally signed with Iowa, but wasn't admitted. He may only be 44%, but he's perfect tonight. Four for four from the line. And we've got a timeout. 320 to play, first half. Bradley has opened up a seven-point lead. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. It's Bradley with a 32-25 lead. 3.20 to play first half. This Bradley basketball telecast is protected by broadcast rights granted by Raycom and the National Invitation Tournament. Any rebroadcast or other use without the express written consent of the NIT or WEDK-TV is strictly prohibited. What's the matter? Bradley Chiefs Club member Dick Motter in attendance tonight and the Eagle watching from the sidelines. The Eagle has landed in Peoria. Where's the Bobcat? You get a look at 6'6", junior Deion Jackson, Bradley's, Bradley's leading scorer a year ago. Lee Bradley's shooting the ball very well in the first half, right at 50% from the floor. Eastern Michigan only 29% from the floor in the first half. Bradley on an 11-4 run. They've filled a nine-point lead. Jim Molinari uh, trying to explain that he's substituting for Bio Akinkale, who has a bloody nose. And having a little trouble getting that point across as Funches checks in for Akinkale. And here comes the pressure. Now they back off. Anthony Parker. Inside Deion Jackson, turnaround jumper, give Deion 10. And it's back to a nine point Bradley lead, three minutes to play, first half. Carpenter hasn't had a lot of room to work. This is a three point attempt by Dial, no good. Parker, Bradley's leading rebounder, whips it ahead to Deion Jackson. Well, that was two great plays there. Anthony Parker just took the ball away from Theron Wilson and then had a presence of mind to find Dion streaking down the floor for that dunk. Two great plays. Unofficially, Dion Jackson is a perfect six for six from the field. <laughs> and that was a high percentage shot there. Bradley now up 11. A lot of contact there with no call. Ron Wilson, the bucket. He has eight. Dion, the reverse miss. That's unofficially his first miss, but he comes up with the steal. Well, Dion's had a mighty nice first half. He's done a lot of things other than just score. He's rebounded. He's played defense. Two minutes to play now, Al, well, just under two minutes now, you can see on your screen. Big Ben, jump hook, no. He's still just not comfortable out there yet, is he? Now, shot, shooting that ball a little bit quick, you know, he's got to stay in there and follow that shot, too. This game was tied 21 all. 
since then, Bradley has gone on a 15 to 6 run. It's Holbert for three. He's got eight. Just like that, Bradley's 11 point lead is down to six. Bunch of 17 footer, no. And good hustle. Good hustle by Tolbert. It'll be Bradley's ball. Gary Burrell checks in for Deion Jackson. He sits with 12 points. And back in for Eastern Michigan is number five, James Head. Parker, a lot of contact off the glass, no good. And they get Carpenter with the charge. That's his first person. You can have a look at this. There's the interior pass to uh, Carpenter. Kerry just slid over. He may not have gotten there in time for that to be a, uh, a charge. I don't know that he caught him square. I also don't know that Carpenter even felt him. <laughs> Parker a little out of control in the lane, but he's fouled by Tolbert. That's Tolbert's second personal. Seventh team foul, so Bradley now in the bonus. Back to back trips on the floor. Now I think Anthony's really tried to force the offense a little bit, penetrate where maybe it wasn't an opening for him. He can really slide into those lanes when there are openings, but uh, he needs to recognize when that of availability is there and when it's not. Tolbert will sit with two personals with 46.7 seconds left in the first half. Anthony Parker at the line. He has nine, perfect from the free throw line. Number 10 in the Valley in free throw percentage. He's also top 10 in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, three point percentage, and assists. Does a little bit of everything for Bradley, including make free throws. He now has 10 points, and Bradley's lead is back to eight. Not an 11 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So Bradley will get one more chance at it this half. Shot clock at 10. Boykins with it. This is where he tries to penetrate and create. Too small for that. Here comes Billy Wright, plenty of time. And oh, look at that. Look at that. He knew Wilson was coming this time. Yeah, he took a look over his shoulder to see what was coming. And uh, you're right, Wilson was coming like a train. You know what really set that up, though, was the penetration by Boykin. He penetrates in. The shot gets blocked. They've got nobody back. Nobody rotating back defensively allowed that fast break to happen. And how about the play by Terry Burrell? He had a block. A steal, picked up a charge, and got down another on the, play right there. And got down on the floor and picked up a loose ball and saved a possession for Bradley earlier in the game also. A lot of things that won't show up in the box score, helping Bradley to a 10-point halftime lead. You're watching first-round action in the National Invitation Tournament. We are back at Carver Arena in Peoria. Eastern Michigan trailing Bradley 40 to 30 at the half. And Roger Fegley, uh, we talked a lot about rebounding early in the game. And uh, that's one thing Bradley has really done a good job of. Done a terrific job rebounding, not only uh, offensively by the, for themselves, but also they've done a good job of keeping Eastern Michigan off their offensive boards also. Let's talk about the transition game. That's something we also talked about in the open. Bradley has really been able to work the transition game very well. well. I think you're right there to a point, but there were a few times in the middle of the first half there I thought Bradley had a twice in a row. They had opportunities to score easy baskets and didn't convert either one of those. But when you're going to run, you have to be able to convert. And uh, for the most part, Bradley's done a pretty good job of that. For the most part, as we take a look at the highlights, uh, a very high percentage shot here, Deion Jackson. This is obviously one of those times they converted real well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was set up by a great rebound by Anthony Parker. Just took that ball right away from Theron Wilson and then found uh, Dion streaking down the floor. It was a great play. Dion with uh, 12 points to lead Bradley. Anthony Parker also with 12 unofficially. And we have Theron Wilson and Brian Tolbert with eight each for Eastern Michigan. We will have more NIT action from Peoria coming your way in just a bit. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. I am 
game. First round of the National Invitation Tournament. Bradley, a 40 to 30 halftime lead. Let's take a look at the stats. And Bradley, a decided advantage in field goal shooting. 49%, only 28% for the Eagles. And they're staying in this game at the line. 12 free throws in the first half to three for Bradley. Bradley, we talked about the rebound advantage, 25 to 17. 10 turnovers for the Eagles, only five for BU. Individually, it's Theron Wilson with nine to lead the way for Eastern Michigan. Brian Tolbert with eight. And we quickly take a look at Anthony Parker and Deion Jackson leading the way for Bradley with 12 each. Aaron Zobris. Aaron Zobris with four. Shad Klein with four. Four other Braves with two points each. Eastern Michigan trying to fire themselves up for a comeback here in the second half, down 10 at the half. Hello to everyone watching the game tonight here in Peoria or and also up in the Ypsilanti Ann Arbor viewing area, Bristol, Connecticut, Austin, Texas. And we understand they're even watching this game at a small sports bar out in Denver. Hello to all of you. Winslow, the turnaround jumper. Well, he started the game with a bucket. He starts the second half with one, two. The senior with four points. That's a shot we really haven't seen from David. Almost a half hook. We haven't seen many shots from him at all. Yeah, you know what? I, looking back over his statistics over the last few games, you're right. He doesn't shoot much, but he has shot the ball over 50 percent his last four or five games. So the shots he's taken, he's been effective with. Colbert gets free. He now has 10. 42-32. Brian Tolbert's their go-to guy. He's going to have to step up and really have a nice second half for them to get back in this basketball game. Now Kinkale called for the charge. Deion Jackson was wide open. Nobody guarding him at the elbow, and he passed the ball off. And not a good decision there by Bile. Probably just should have stopped and shot a four-foot jump shot. He's got the nice height advantage. Nobody's going to bother his shot. Yeah, but you know, Akinkale at 210, I think at 200 pounds, is not going to knock over 225-pound Kareem Carpenter. You're saying if they're if they're in that uh, bar in Denver, he doesn't go down that <laughs> no easy? No way. <laughs> Quickly ahead to Anthony Parker. Leaves it for Jackson. Tied up. Ball goes in anyway. Well, sometimes you just have those games where the ball seems to go in the basket no matter how you throw it up, just so you get up there soft. Dion really created himself a pretty tough shot here. He got his right arm pulled away. Still managed to get that up soft, and it fell in. Foul is on Theron Wilson, his second. Boy, what great body control. Dion Jackson started the season 220 pounds, but he's down to about 205 and getting off the floor much better. 15 for Dion. And it's a 13-point Bradley lead. Boykins, the leading assist man in the MAC this season with it. No assists for Eastern Michigan in the first half. Tolbert takes it himself. He's got four quick ones. Now Dion almost had another quick one. Boy, the Braves have really got out and, and pushed the ball up the floor more tonight, I think, than at any time this year. Another capitalizing on it more tonight than at any point in the season and especially when was the last time you saw a Bradley team take the ball out of bounds after a made basket and get a breakaway at the other end. Deion Jackson had 13 points against Tulsa in the semifinal loss. That was his fifth career tournament game in the Valley and the first time he reached double figures in scoring so he finally broke out of that dry spell. Deion two for two at the line tonight. Oh boy. He's got the How does that work? They, they brought the player out when the foul was committed and sent him back in after the first free throw was made. 
no time it had, had run off the clock, so you can't bring him the guy back in that you had uh, that you had taken out before some time leaves from the clock. Carpenter inside. He'll go to the line for the three-point play, and we saw the ISU score early on. Illinois State playing at Utah State tonight. Illinois State really got a tough draw having to travel all the way out to Utah State to play in the first round. Now Dial will check in. <clears throat> and Carpenter will go to the line for the three-point play. Carpenter has nine. And the Eagles are back within ten. Jackson, double team all alone. A King Kale had to follow and missed it. Age McCune for three. That's how you get back in the ball game quick. A couple of missed opportunities by Bradley and Eastern Michigan comes down quickly, hits a three, cuts the lead to seven. Parker's shot is in and out. Carpenter the rebound. Here's Boykins. Chased down by Billy Wright, but Boykins hits a layup. Nice little run by Eastern Michigan there again. Same thing that happened in the first half uh, against East Eastern Michigan. Worked to their favor there. The penetration by Parker from the guard spot. Nobody rotates back. You get a rebound. If somebody sneaks out, you've got that long pass available. An 8 nothing run. Bradley's lead cut to 5. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. Jim Molinari mapping strategy and Dwayne Funches rubbing David Winslow's head for luck, perhaps. I don't know. It's an 8-0 run for the Eagles. A couple of uh, bad things happen for Bradley. They get the ball down low to Dion right where they want it. He misses that shot. Bio has got a gimme. He misses it. It turns into a quick three for Eastern Michigan at the other end. And then the penetration by uh, Anthony Parker, the missed shot, the layup by, by Boykins. And... Uh, we talked, you know, the last five minutes of the first half. Bradley played extremely well, finished out from a 21-21 tie on a 19-9 uh, run. But Eastern Michigan has fought their way back in their first five minutes of the second half to get themselves right back in this game. Deion Jackson the miss. Winslow almost had the rebound. And Eastern Michigan with a chance. To cut into that five-point lead, they could get it down to two. And a foul on the drive. Foul goes against Deion Jackson. That's his third. Third team foul for Bradley this half. The Eagles will inbounds. Aaron Zobris will check in for Bradley on the next dead ball. Carpenter goes to work. He's fouled by David Winslow. Winslow second. Watch how Carpenter does a nice job here. He finds the contact, spins. Gets himself in position. He's got those strong arms and shoulders. He just fights up through the foul to create that foul. And that's the one thing that Bradley coaches were talking about yesterday was how Carpenter can really bang and looks for the contact and, and works with that. Well, you, you talk about some guys are finesse players and some guys are just bangers or contact players. And he's an example of a contact player. If when he catches it and turns, there's nobody there, he will actually go looking for somebody to bang that body against. He's better and he's really quicker than he looks because uh, he made a really nice spin move there on uh, David Winslow and got himself in position. Kareem Jabbar Carpenter, yes. That's who he was named after. He has 11. Averages 12 points, 12 rebounds a game, and it's a three-point ball game in Peoria. Lee Hall, Roger Fegley bringing you first round NIT action. Billy Wright. Kicks to Winslow, free throw line jumper, bounces no good. And it's Carpenter with the rebound. He had 27 in a game against Western Michigan earlier this year. Dial, air balls it. Well, they had a lot of things going in their favor, and that was not a very good shot by Dial. 
Bradley, on the other hand, has gotten some pretty good shots off their offense. They've ran it well and got the ball to the right people in the right spots. They just haven't got the ball in the hoop. Billy Wright gets his feet set for three. We talked in the opening about how Billy's ability to score. He's been averaging 11 points over the last four or five ball games. He hasn't got many tonight, but he stepped up and hit a big one there. That stops a 10-0 Eastern Michigan run. 15 minutes to play, first half, Bradley by six. Boykins with it. Looks to create with 10 on the shot clock. McCune off a pick, in and out. And here's Billy Wright at the other end, gathers it in and stays in bounds. Nice hustle by the junior out of Richmond, Indiana. Nice hustle and great recognition there. He found himself catching the ball defended and probably too far under the basket to get a shot off the presence of mind to pull that one out Parker short from three and an ill-advised foul by David Winslow over the back that's his third yes they're coming from behind Punches checks in for Winslow who sits down with three the Bradley man-to-man. -man. Boykins looking inside for Wilson, but can't get it to him. Good defense by Klein. Shot clock at six. They try to work it inside. Carpenter comes back up with it. Shot clock at two. And they got bailed out with one on the shot clock. Not very many people like that call, but if we get a look at it here, we're going to see Carpenter. There he is, finding the contact. Now watch. Funches will get him with the left arm, right and right arm, right there. I mean, it was an obvious foul, but that's just a great play by a guy who's got strong arms and shoulders and just takes that ball right up through your arms and just creates fouls for himself. Transfers from Idaho State. Averaged 18 points a game a year ago. Kareem Carpenter now has 12. He's hit four straight free throws here in the second half. Well, it's starting to happen here also. Eastern Michigan is starting to come up with a few more offensive rebounds, keeping the ball alive a few more times, and they're starting to come up with those loose balls. The free throw advantage is now seventh now. Make that 16 to 3 in favor of the visitors. 50 to 45. Parker is fouled by McCune. And he'll go to the line for two. Take a look again. Nathan McCune thought he got a lot of the ball right there. I don't know if they call him for foul. Hitting on the arm there. He had the left arm on the hip for about three dribbles in the penetration. And Anthony Parker named the all-tournament team in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. His first point of the second half. Now he can't get the second one down. Parker with 13. 51-45, Braves by six. The winner here plays Canisius next Monday in round two of the National Invitation Tournament. Shot clock at 10, stolen away by Anthony Parker. Boy, and the first thing he did was look down floor. The Braves releasing quickly, but no advantage that time. Zobrist is open for three. Can't get it to go. He has not made a three tonight. He has, he's 0 for 2 from out there. And Jim Molinari up in front of us, really hollering at Bradley. Taking too many shots with no white jerseys around the white jerseys around the basket. All Eastern Michigan in the three rebounding spots that time. Ball taken away again by Parker. And the Braves will work out of the half court set with a six-point lead. Klein thought about the three, gives instead to Zobris. 
Parker will turn around and fire the three, but no good. There's an offensive rebound for the Braves, a long one to Funcher. That's a good set play there. Had three looks for shots there. Waited for the third option. Got Anthony on a terrific look from the top of the key. It was a good point of the game right there where you just had a couple of steals, haven't converted on it to stop and run something that everybody's familiar with. Klein's open for three. Chad Klein with seven points. A big bucket there for Bradley. Their lead back up to nine. That's a big series. They took some time off the clock, really worked it around, and got themselves a good shot. Chad Klein buried a three from long range, and that just caps off the fact that you've really controlled the tempo of that one possession and got the shot that you wanted. The foul goes against Tony King, his second. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Bradley back to a nine-point lead. You're watching first-round action in the National Invitation Tournament. And we are back at Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois, out in Logan, Utah. It's Illinois State and Utah State tied at 23. Another first-round NIT action. Our score here, Bradley leading Eastern Michigan 54-45. The Eagles made a 10-0 run and got within five. But now Bradley seems to have stemmed the tide at least momentarily. And did it their way at the defensive end. Back-to-back -back steals by Anthony Parker. A couple of good offensive executions and a three-pointer by Chad. A couple of inside hoops. Just a good three or four minutes spurt there by Bradley that got the momentum back in their court. 11.58 to play in this ball game. Round two. The round two game in this matchup would be Monday against Canisius, the winner here. And you would figure that Canisius would be on the road after drawing only 3,700 to their first round game at home last night. And Bradley has well over 7,000 here tonight as Funches misses what the Eagles can't control. I'd say they're pretty close to 8,000 tonight, a little over maybe. I would say that's a very good guess, 8,000 tonight. You know, the game's been interesting. It was played even early. It was uh, Bradley went on a, a run at the end of the first half. Eastern came back, made a nice run in the second half. Now Bradley has stopped that and maybe on a little bit of a run themselves. But, you know, I think the difference in the game is Bradley's run has been longer than Eastern Michigan's runs. Carpenter hooked in the lane and got away with it. He'll go to the line for the three-point play. We talked in the opening about how this Watch type left of player, arm. how this type of player can give Bradley some problems, and once again, he uses those shoulders to make a space for himself. You're right, that left arm. You use that as a, uh, they call it a hook when you use that to uh, hold a defensive player off to give you the advantage on that spin move. Wasn't picked up that time. It really gave him an inside position and the, the area to go up to make that shot. That's the third foul on Funches. Already the seventh team foul on the Braves. That has uh, the Bradley front line in some foul trouble now. As Carpenter gets to the Eagles within six. Winslow, Funches, and Jackson now all with three personals. That's Deion Jackson with it. Now Aaron Zobrist, 47% three-point shooter. And Carpenter calls for the block. That was a good call. A pretty good move by Chad there. You know, he receives that pass. He's hit a couple from out there. That time he puts it on the floor and goes to the baseline. Carpenter obviously not there to draw that charge and pick up the block. Ben Braun in his 10th year at Eastern Michigan. Second in EMU history in wins, 160 for his career. Zobris, baseline jumper is good. Well, I love those out-of-bounds plays where you set up a shooter initially to get a quick shot. Bradley back up by eight. Michigan controls, Carpenter, good job, kicks it to Dial, shot clock at 10. 
Missed it. Billy Wright the rebound. Here come the Braves three on two. Nice kick to Zobras for three. You know what? You can see it coming. He had Dion on the right. Everybody thought, I've got to get to this guy. This guy's going to dunk on us. And Anthony, or uh, Billy, just knew that uh, Aaron would slide to that corner. That's one of his favorite shots. He got it to him, and that's a big three. An 11 point Braves lead. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. 59 48 Braves, an 11 point lead. They've led by as many as 13. Aaron Zobris now needs only 10 three pointers to tie Hersey Hawkins' season record. He gives Bradley an 11 point lead. Nice job on the break. I love the way Billy just kept glancing over to Dion brought everybody's attention to that side of the floor and uh, Aaron just wide open just sliding into that three point shot in the corner. Bradley with the rebound advantage 32 to 25. But it's Eastern Michigan with the free throw advantage tonight 17 to 6. Score just handed to us. Illinois State leads Utah State 28-24 with 6.24 to go first half. Inside, Carpenter. A change of defense there. He put Ben in front. They were still able to throw the ball over top of Ben Coupet, 6'11". Carpenter caught it, and he had nobody to guard him at that point. He has 17. Raise with the ball and a nine-point lead. Now Tolbert guarding Billy Wright. Billy Wright kicks to Chad Klein, open for three, a little short. Zobras got the rebound. Late whistle, they said he was out of bounds. One of the dribbles must have touched the uh, inline. It was a little bit of a late whistle, didn't blow it until actually uh, Aaron had got the ball headed toward the basket. Cut it to five after trailing by as many as 13 here in the second. Now Billy, no, that makes that Deion Jackson comes up with the steal. Turnover is really becoming a problem here for Eastern Michigan. Deion backs him in, turns around and hits. Jackson with 19. They're going to have to do something about that. There's no way Derek Dial can handle Deion Jackson with his back to the basket six feet away. He just doesn't have the size or the jumping ability to do that. Dion averaged 20 points a game in last year's NIT, and he has 19 tonight. Theron Wilson in and out. And it's Jackson the rebound. He's done a much better job on the glass the last half of the season also. Uh, they got to keep going to Dion. He's, being, he's got uh, dial at both ends. Dion managed to get that rebounding position at the other end. If they can find him down low, he should have a field day. Back into the ball game for Bradley. Anthony Parker, he replaces Billy Wright. Nage McCune checks in for Dial. And that's a great substitution, too. We just talked about how Dial can handle Dion. They get a lot more size, a lot more bulk than uh, McCune to handle Dion. Braves up 11. Zobris, three. A little short. Klein got a hand on it. Chad's seen a lot of minutes tonight with the bad shoulder. Yeah, he has. You know, Sean Payne said before the game started that he really didn't work out much at all. Practice hurt it last uh, weekend. Practice Monday re-injured it when he fell to the floor. He did nothing uh, Tuesday or the rest of Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday or today other than get treatment and he's on an anti-inflammatory medicine which is allowing him to get full range of motion but the strength is what uh, Bradley trainer Sean Payne says he doesn't have at this time. No, bad foul there by Deion Jackson. That will be his fourth with 7.54 to play in this ball game. Jim Molinari will have to substitute for Deion. Billy Wright will check in for him. Great performance so far by Deion. 19 points to lead. All scores. 
make a no two, 7.54 to play. Bradley up 10 with that made free throw. They need to buy a little time with Dion out of the game, make sure they can stay ahead with the uh, the 10 point lead. Can you make that note for me? Thanks. Parker had it blocked by Wilson. Billy Wright deep in the corner, no good. 61-51, Braves a 10-point lead. Tolbert lost it, and here comes Bradley. Bradley They've got the numbers. numbers. Coupette! <laughs> Big Ben's first bucket, it's Bradley by a dozen. Tell you what, take a lesson there from Billy. He stopped out high, made somebody take one step to him, and that's what opened Ben up down low. Had Aaron on that left wing for a three-point shot. Just a lot of good things would happen from that, from that point. Boykins with seven. It's a 10-point Braves lead with 6.30 to play in the ball game. Pet against Wilson. I'll tell you, Ben Coupet came to Jim Molinari's program with a lot of potential, a lot of expectations. One thing he has to work on is taking the ball to the hole instead of away from it. I think. Yeah, he like well, like the lack of strength is what's causing him to shoot that shot. He just doesn't have the ability to uh, draw that contact and take the ball to the basket. He's shying away a little bit from that. No shyness on that three-pointer there by uh, Little Earl, Earl Boykins. Boykins. He's got 10 now, and it's 63-56 with six minutes left. Kareem Carpenter is very close to getting a technical foul. Well, he might have a pretty good argument here. Obviously, Ben's going to shoot this ball on a nice pass from Billy there. He's going up to shoot, and then there's the foul. And Kareem Carpenter says he's still on the floor, which he was. But uh, again, you don't have to be in the air with the ball being released. You just have to be in the momentum of taking that shot. Third personal on Carpenter. Ben Coupet at the line, just a 50% free thrower. 6'11", sophomore out of Simeon in Chicago. It's the first one. Four points, and he takes a seat. Nice job by Coupet Winslow in for him. Perry Burrell into the ball game as well for Zobrist. Both teams now in the bonus. Bradley back to a nine-point lead, under six minutes to play. Tomorrow, for our local viewers on WEEK, it's IHSA Elite Eight basketball, beginning at noon. And we'll have Peoria Manuel against Hersey at 145. Yours truly with the play-by-play -play from Champagne as we take another look here. Boy, look at that pass right over David Winslow's shoulder. That was a beautiful pass. A great camera angle to pick that one up. Eastern Michigan will be in the double bonus on the next Bradley foul as McCune steps to the line. Zobris back in for Bradley, for Burrell. Nage McCune, a 6'3 sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. Averages six points a game. Can't get the free throws down. AP had it and lost it. But it's Winslow there to pick it up. Nine-point Braves lead. Led it by as many as 13. Klein spots up for three, in and out. He's had a couple that have just rolled around like that. Colbert all alone. Pretty, 
flat, short shot. He has been held to 12 points, average of 17 for the Eagles. And they got to wonder, neither one of these teams have played in about a week now. You got to wonder how their legs are, even though you, you do practice and you go hard in practice when you have that much time off. It's not the same as playing in the game. And a lot of players look like their legs may be a little tired, just a little bit short on some of those jump shots. Billy right down the lane, rejected by Wilson, and Eastern Michigan comes up with it. Not dead yet. McCune kicks to Tolbert for three. Tolbert with 15. Jim Molinari wants to stem that tide. As Eastern Michigan gets back within six, 424 to play in regulation. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. 424 to play in regulation. It's Bradley by six. They've led it by as many as 13. Boy, Ben Cuvette standing around in a good spot, I guess. The <laughs> bus will come by, right? Yeah, you're big enough that people can find you. <laughs> nice job that time by Billy Wright stopping at the free throw line like you're taught to do in grade school on the fast break. Stop at the free throw line. He did, and it turned into two for Bradley. There's a halftime score from Logan, Utah. Illinois State finally gets in the NIT. They were snubbed as conference champions two years in a row. They lead Utah State 40 to 39 at the half. They must be playing well because that's not only a tough place to play, but that's a pretty tough team they're playing against. The Redbirds very capable. They go out there and play their game. They've got some weapons that uh, you have to contend with. Second seed in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Anthony Parker off the glass, no good. And it's Eastern Michigan ball. Now, the Redbirds and the Braves could face each other. If they both win first and second round contest, they would meet to determine who would go to New York, New York. That would be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be interesting to see where they play it. Uh, the way things have gone in the past, that would be a major factor. Three forty-seven left. There you see the clock. Another turnover. Another bad turnover by Eastern Michigan. Billy Wright can't finish. A nice looked, job by Boykins, the freshman, to hold it up and start over. Billy looked like he lost track of where he was on the floor. Boykins hits the three and does a dance. He's got thirteen. He's hit a couple of threes here late in the second half, and they've both been big. 65-62, Eastern Michigan will not quit. We talked about it's a game of runs. Eastern Michigan making one of their own right now. They're making it at a point in the game that's very, very important. They've got to stop this run. If this continues, you know, they could walk out of here with what's called stealing a game, not having the lead for the entire game, just leading the last couple of minutes and catching a team by surprise. That ends an 11-3 run. Bradley comes up with it. A couple of big possessions there. Bradley gets a bucket and comes up with the ball with 2.30 to play. Every possession now very, very important at both ends. You really got to go into these last two and a half minutes with the thought that every time you have the ball, it's the most important possession of the game. Every time you're at the defensive end, it's the most important defensive stand of the game. Winslow tap dances and can't keep it in bounds. He didn't cross the 10 second line, but he lost it out of bounds. 2.09 to play. Derek Dial checks in for Nage McCune. The Eagles have played valiantly tonight. A couple of spurts in the second half have kept them in at an 11 or an 11 3 run and a 10 0 run earlier in the half. Tolbert off balance three is good, and it's 67 65. 
Colbert with 18. He's hit two threes in a row. And we talked about it from the opening. He's their go-to guy, and it's go-to time, and he responds. Who will go to round two? It was looking like it was Bradley, but this game is still hotly contested as Deion Jackson hits in the lane. He's got 21. You know, it took a long time for that play to develop, but Bradley got exactly what it was looking for. Deion Jackson against Derek Dial. That's his first basket since he sat down with four fouls with 7.54 to play. Tolbert again. He's got 20. Eastern Michigan playing Bradley and the clock now under a minute to play. The Eagles will get the ball back. And Tolbert fouls. Anthony Parker, he will go to the line and shoot the bonus. Five in the line tonight. A couple of big ones here. His last five games, 18 points a game for the sophomore out of Naperville Central. He hit big free throws in that overtime win a year ago against Drake. He's got one and the bonus here. It out to Parker the miss 70 to 67 there's a 15 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock Tolbert for three won't worry about it the shot clock is off and we are tied what Tolbert with 23 what a great shot that was AP came all the way to the three-point line to guard him. Tolbert just stepped back to NBA range and launched it. An outstanding basket and a great performance by Tolbert, who has 23 points, 15 of them here in the second half. We are tied with 30.5 seconds to play in regulation. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. Jim Molinari's Bradley Braves led this ball game by as many as 13 earlier in the second half, but Eastern Michigan has fought back valiantly, led by Brian Tolbert, the junior out of Detroit. A clutch three-pointer from way outside has tied this ball game at 70. 30.5 seconds left. Bradley, not in a bad situation, you know. If you're at home, you've got the ball for the last shot. That's not a bad deal. I would not be surprised to see him hold the ball, take the last shot. Hey, if you're at home, we'll go overtime or we'll win it at the buzzer. But uh, what you don't want to do is give Eastern Michigan a shot to win at the end. Is Deion Jackson too obvious a target for the Braves? Well, I think Eastern Michigan really feels they're going to go to Dion. They made a major change there for the first time all night. Theron Wilson at six foot nine, guarding Dion Jackson. The play they've got set is for Dion to circle down low. I would be very surprised if we see much other than uh, Aaron Zoldris or Dion down low. Billy Wright for the win. And we'll go to overtime. It's not the shot that uh, Bradley wanted, and Jim Molinari quick to the floor to point out that the back screen was set by Aaron. Dion slid down into great position down low. It, Billy didn't see him and took the jump shot and just missed it. We'll take a look at it and go to overtime. Coming up, you're watching first round action of the National Invitation Tournament. at Carver Arena in Peoria. Bradley had a shot to win it with time running out, but Billy Wright's shot was short. And 
Aaron Zobris was wide open at the free throw line. That was a great play set up by Jim. Everyone thought they were going to Dion. Eastern Michigan did too. They set up their defense to stop that. Aaron, who set the screen to try and get Dion open, slid around a Chad Klein screen, was coming up to the free throw line, and was a pretty open from the looks of that replay. And we'll jump it up. And it's controlled again by Eastern Michigan. The Eagles 0-1 in overtime this season. They lost in overtime at Bowling Green. Bradley 1-0 in overtime. They beat Evansville here in Peoria. Five extra minutes. Tied at 70. The winner plays Canisius Monday night. Shot clock at 8. Carpenter with 6. Off the glass. No good, but Wilson is there. Leron Wilson's first bucket of the second half. You know what, that's the first time Bradley slid over the double team. Nobody was there to block out the Ron Wilson, and he just followed that one to the hoop. And that's Eastern Michigan's first lead since 15 to 13. basket in the second half of course it's his first basket since the first half since we're in overtime Parker for three no good Winslow almost had it but Carpenter comes down with it under four minutes to go in OT Tolbert with it. Haven't been able to stop him. And the foul inside. Whistled against David Winslow as his fourth. That was a great pass by Tolbert. I don't know how he slipped that ball through all those white jerseys right there. And there's a foul. David Winslow reaching in. Grab the right arm. Aaron Zobris checks in for the Braves. He'll replace David Winslow. Tenth team foul on the Braves. Double bonus now for Eastern Michigan. Only 17 fouls on the Eagles. Carpenter at the line. Perfect five for five there tonight. All in the second half. Carpenter with 18. The King was a 48% free throw shooter. Made all of his in the first half. Carpenter's a 54% free throw shooter. He's made all of his here in the second half. Eastern Michigan has stayed in this game at the line. 19 for Carpenter. And it's a four-point Eastern Michigan lead in overtime. Jackson. defense there by uh, Theron Wilson. He's got the size. They finally got the right guy on Dion to where he can really go up with him and disturb that shot. Dion's shot really looked flat that time. Wilson did a nice job playing good defense, not fouling, blocking out and being able to come up with that rebound. Huge possession here for Eastern Michigan. Tolbert. Good defensive rotation there. A lot of help on that drive. Parker with it. Inside, no good, forced it. Wasn't a very good shot by Anthony, you're right. I think he did force that one a little bit. And another big possession for Eastern Michigan. Bradley has not scored in the overtime. They'll be content to work the clock a little bit and now go to work with 10 on the shot clock. Tolbert, guarded by Zobris, got around him again. Finds McCune inside with two on the shot clock. Well, the inside people from Bradley right now are just not finding people to guard. Their penetration and quick passes are creating a lot of easy opportunities. It's a six-point Eastern Michigan lead with 2.15 to go in OT. You're watching first-round action in the National Invitation Tournament. And as 
Jim Molinari tries to get the offense going for his Braves. Illinois State in a struggle at Utah State, tied in the second half. Here in overtime, Bradley has not scored. They've been outscored 6-0. That's a play where Janesaw came over to help on the double team. Nobody there to block out the Ron Wilson. Slides right down the lane and gets one of the easiest ones you'll ever get. The Braves go to work with 2.15 to play, and they really need to go to work in a hurry. Well, this is a huge possession here. They need to uh, really work to get a good shot here and then come back and play solid defense. Zobers with it, now right. Shot clock at 10. Billy Wright with it with six, down the lane, off the glass and good. Big bucket by Billy Wright, he has seven. Bradley's first points of the overtime. Bradley went through a lot of options to get that layup by Billy and he just darted down the lane. Eastern Michigan didn't rotate around very well to pick that up. There's no five second closely guarded call anymore. So Boykins keeps it on a yo-yo. 1.20 to play. Shot clock at nine. No surprise, Tolbert with it now with five. With four, with three, four, three. In and out. Oh, he almost had it. A minute nine to play. Here come the Braves down by four. They need to get a bucket quicker this time around. Klein with it. Now Jackson goes to work off the dribble. Oh, one and a goal, 10, didn't get it. And he's fouled inside by Theron Wilson. He'll go to the line. Jackson will go to the line. That was really close to a goaltending Very ball. close. I'd like to see it again. It's hard to tell from the angle when the camera's above the rim if that ball's really on its downward trend. From here, it looked like it was From here, I thought it had flight. caught its peak and was on its way down. I think it probably kept it from being a goaltending call. It was a great athletic play by Wilson. He's about five feet away from the basket when he gets up there to block that shot. That's that camera angle there doesn't do justice to the fact of how high he was to block that. Yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> gives everybody in this joint a heart murmur with that one. Dion with 22. Bradley back within three, and Ben Braun will take timeout for Eastern Michigan. 76-73, 54.6 seconds left in overtime. You're watching first round action in the National Invitation Tournament. The Eagles are happy right now. 76-73, 54.6 kicks left in the first overtime. Deion Jackson made his first free throw. He's now got 1,146 career points. 22nd on Bradley's all-time list. More importantly, he needs one more to get Bradley within two. Up and good. 76-74, Parker in for Deion Jackson. The Braves will likely look to foul as quickly as possible, you would think, although there is time to force a stop and get the ball back. They don't want to foul Tolbert. Boykin's a 71% free thrower. 16 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Bradley down two. Funny, the game is going to boil down to exactly what we talked about in the opening. Eastern Michigan's ability to penetrate and Bradley's ability to stop that penetration one-on-one. -on -one. Shot clock at six. Tolbert spins with four. Blocked out of bounds with two on the shot clock. I think Molinari's way out of the coaching box and in our view. <laughs> two on the shot clock. Carpenter, didn't know it, shot clock violation, does not count. Well, how could you not know there was only two seconds on the shot clock? Bradley, no timeouts left. They wanted to get Deion Jackson in, but they can't, and they're out of timeouts. 
Parker down the lane. Huge shot. Goes with 6.2 left. Anthony Parker ties the game. Quickly the other way. With two, with one. Boykins to win it. Won't go. We're going to the second overtime. I tell you, you can't imagine. Oh, my goodness. Bradley desperately oh. trying to get Deion Jackson in the game. Couldn't get him in in time. Anthony penetrates, makes that shot. Eastern Michigan's coach is up, jumping up and down, wanting a timeout, and they get a terrific shot without the timeout. Let's take a look at it again. The Bradley coaching staff was doing jumping jacks, trying to get Deion Jackson in before the Braves inbounded. Well, I'm telling you right now, Eastern Michigan's coach is up doing jumping jacks, wanting a timeout, and they don't get it either. They don't even look to him. But I tell you what, Eastern Michigan, uh, Earl Boykin's got a really pretty, a, a very good shot at the basket with just a couple of ticks left. Ooh, Ooh doggies. Where does the <laughs> momentum go now? In Eastern Michigan, a six-point lead with just a couple of minutes to, to go in that first overtime. Bradley really fought back, showed they've got a little bit of heart. And Watch here this they are. Now. I tell you what, with the head fake and the step under there, that's really a pretty good look. I mean, when you're bringing it up with six seconds to go and you get that kind of shot, you know, you got to feel bad you miss those, but you're not going to get much better than that. Uh, even if they call the timeout, that's, uh, that's a pretty good look at it. Bradley once went seven overtimes with Cincinnati at the Fieldhouse. I just wanted to throw that out there. The second overtime begins. I'm gonna run out of space on my score sheet. Eastern Michigan wins the tap again. Bradley needs to do a better job defensively in this overtime and uh, and get going offensively a little quicker. I'll tell you, a stat that'll never show up in a stat sheet is uh, the fact that Theron Wilson has gotten every jump ball. That's an advantage. Eastern Michigan coming up with both overtimes, receiving that first to possession. Now there's the offensive rebounding strength of the Eagles. Wilson has 13. You know, you got to wonder. Eastern Michigan is so much bigger than Bradley physically inside. You got to wonder at what point in this game, even with the substitution pattern that Bradley has had, does their physical size just take over the game? Punches was blocked. His shot was blocked. They call the foul against the Ron Wilson. That is his fourth. And in the second overtime, that is the 19th foul against Ben Braun's Eagles. So Bradley will go into the double bonus on the next foul. This is a shooting foul, so Funches will get two free throws. 65% free thrower has really picked it up in the latter half of the year. His first point of the ball game, and it couldn't come at a better time for Bradley. 78-78, David Winslow replaces Funches. Bradley led this by 13 in the second half. Just short, Colbert and Billy Wright with the rebound. And Colbert starting to show that he is human. And this is last couple of attempts from about that same spot where we buried so many of them earlier. It's a big possession for Bradley here. They need to really get themselves a good shot. Billy Wright, baseline jumper is good. Good ball movement there. Found Billy in the corner. You know, if you're scouting Bradley, you think that may be the guy, rather than Parker is over, she wants to take that long jump shot. Very, Billy just stepped up and buried it. Here comes the sixth man for Bradley, an important cog all year. That's a big stand right here defensively. Wilson is just too much down low. He's got 15, and we're tied again at 80. Been somewhat quiet offensively when they actually just go to him. They've been going to Carpenter so well, but Deron Wilson, the past two or three trips down the floor, been very effective. Zobers can't get the three to go. Klein knocks it out of bounds on the rebound. Zobers has been cold from three point range.
unofficially one for five from beyond the arc. A 47% three-point shooter during the season. Two forty to go in the second overtime. Carpenter. Follow Wilson. Offensive rebounding. We've talked about it all night. He has 17. And it's 82-80. Deion Jackson on the bench with four personals. Chad Klein can't get it to go. And Jackson will check in on the next dead ball. Two minutes to play in the second overtime. We were tied at 70 at the end of regulation. Tied at 76 after the first overtime. Shot clock at seven. Tolbert with it. A great second half for him. Three, two, one. No, no, it didn't. That's two. That's two shot clock violations. In the second overtime. Make that. There was one at the end of the first overtime and now another one. So two overtimes, two shot clock violations, and both of them big because both times the shots that were taken just after the clock expired went in. Good point. The rule is you have to release it before the clock goes off. That's right. It's got to be out of your hand. Jackson back in. He's got it. Gets it back from Klein. Off the glass and good, Deion Jackson with 25. Boy, from that angle to use the glass, that is just a beautiful shot. Outstanding work by the junior from Dayton. We're tied at 82. One minute to play in the second overtime. Almost stolen away, and it is. Aaron Zober's got a hand in there. There's a 19 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock and Billy Wright is fouled by Brian Tolbert. That's the 10th team foul finally on Eastern Michigan. Number four on Tolbert, Billy Wright will shoot two. And that's a bad foul. I mean you foul with 46 seconds to go. Bradley either makes or misses these. Eastern Michigan's going to get the ball back, but fouling with 46 so seconds gives Bradley a chance to get the ball back again. Billy Wright's first free throw of the night is good. 83-82. Billy, 69% free thrower, nails them both. Bradley a two-point lead. Winslow in there for defense. He replaces Zobris. A good substitution defensive and rebounding wise. Bradley just helped himself considerably. Back at Carver Arena in Peoria, Lee Hall, Roger Fegley. Second overtime, 43 seconds left. Bradley leads it by two. Good hands by Aaron Zobris, the sophomore from Metamora. Coming up with the steal. And then it was Deion Jackson with a tough bucket off the glass. And then, as you mentioned, a bad foul by Eastern Michigan star Brian Tolbert, who sent Billy Wright to the line for two free throws. With a lot of time left, that ensures Bradley getting the ball back. Fouled him 25 feet away from the basket. Billy's not a threat. He's not going to shoot at that point. If, he, if you're going to foul somebody, you know, it's, that's not a bad plan, but do it when you're going to get the last shot, not when uh, you're going to guarantee the home team having the last shot at the basket. There's a 12 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. That's how much time Bradley would have left. One timeout each for Bradley and Eastern Michigan. They go to Wilson right away. He's fouled by Chad Klein and will go to the line. Chad Klein. Boy, that's a Whistle tough for his third foul. That's a tough call. We'll get a look at it here. Ron Wilson back in. Chad leaning on him a little bit, but. That was not much of a foul. Jim Molinari asking us. Let me clarify that and say that's not that much of a foul at this point in the game. Very similar play at the other end when Deion Jackson had the ball and backed in against three on for on Wilson and made that shot off the glass. A lot of contact there. No foul call. 
71% free thrower short, but gets his own rebound off the glass, and he's fouled again. Well, and the free throw advantage continues to increase for Eastern Michigan. Winslow fouls out. That's really tough for Bradley. You get the miss on the free throw and you don't get that rebound. 21 to 12, the free throw advantage for Eastern Michigan. Winslow, the senior, hopes this isn't his last game as a Bradley Brave. He's replaced by Funches. Winslow fouls out with four points. He had the first basket of the game and the first basket of the second half. And it's Deron Wilson trying it again. 71% free thrower. Rattles the first one in. He's got 19 and we're tied. Bradley will have a shot to win it. Wilson can only give him a one point lead. He does. He has 20. Eastern Michigan calls the timeout. That's their last with 28.7 seconds left in the second overtime. And we will be back as Jim Molinari tries to orchestrate a win here in Peoria, 85-84 Eastern Michigan. You're watching first round action of the National Invitation Tournament. Jim Molinari down one with 28.7 seconds to play and the ball. Bradley got a clutch bucket from Anthony Parker at the end of the first overtime after trailing by six. They need a bucket here for the win. Second overtime of the night. No extra charge, folks. We're bringing it to you. No extra charge. What a bargain. The winner plays Canisius Monday. Bradley down one. They need a bucket to win it. Now you got to get into it early enough to get a shot that if there's a miss, you got a chance for an offensive rebound. Deion Jackson swatted away. Zobra saved it. And it's Bradley Ball. How could that not have been a foul? No idea. One timeout left for Bradley, none for Eastern Michigan. There's 12.9 seconds left, and Bradley wants a timeout. Boy, I thought Aaron went up to save that ball. I thought Boykin just pushed him with both hands in the chest, tried to push him out of bounds. Well, and I thought I thought they were going to give the ball to Eastern Michigan. I thought it was. I thought Zobers had it when he was out of bounds. So. At any rate, it is Bradley's ball with 12.9 seconds left and a bit of a break there that they get, they did go to it early enough where they get another chance to reset. They have to have a basket. How about the Ron Wilson's block right there? That's got the ball to D. I got mean. him low to the basket, back to the basket, right where they wanted him. He turned around and the Ron Wilson was right there. And how big has he been for this team? Nine points. Here in the second overtime for Theron Wilson, all with four fouls. He averages just 8.7 points a game. He was all tournament in the MAC tournament. The leading shot blocker in the conference, I guess. He came up with a huge one there as the Braves. See the job in front of them. 12.9 seconds left in the second overtime. Down by one. It's been a long night, all right. I can relate. After this, I'm on my way to Champaign to bring you IHSA basketball tomorrow. That will be a lot of fun. Manuel and Hersey at 145 here on WEEK. Peoria Manuel. Trying to win back-to-back -back state championships. We've got high school basketball all day tomorrow on WEEK. We've got 10 seconds of Bradley basketball left tonight. Oh, and Jackson was fouled. Well, Kareem Carpenter wanted a jump ball, but it will not go his way there. It will be a two-shot foul. Deion Jackson will go to the line. He's five for five at the line tonight. Seven seconds left. Jackson has to make one to tie. He does. Yeah. 
No need to say how big that one was. And how big is this one? Well, you still got to play great defense for seven seconds to win. In and out, men. No timeouts. Punches will check in. Defensively to replace Deion Jackson, who just hit the two biggest free throws of his career. 86, 85, but there's seven seconds left. Boykins got a good look last time. In the lane for the win. Down 76 70 in the first overtime with under two minutes to play. They fight back and hang on. And I'm going to say, whether we were going back to Eastern Michigan or not on TV, what an outstanding game by both teams. What great effort. It's a cliche, but it's too bad somebody had to lose this one because that was a great game, but it really was. It wasn't the NCAA tournament. It was the NIT, but I tell you what, there will not be a better game than what we saw tonight played anywhere at any time. Very tough to be a broadcaster, exciting as this is because you get caught up in the excitement of the ball game, but 86-85 the final in double overtime. Eastern Michigan played their hearts out. Deion Jackson hit the big free throws, and he joins us now, 27 points unofficially for the junior out of Dayton. Congratulations, Deion. Way to go. Tell us tell us about uh, the play. You went inside. You made some contact there. You got the free throws to win it. Yeah, uh, free throws was big tonight. Is it on? Yeah, free throws was big tonight. Uh, you know, it came down to the, um, the regular, um, the last few minutes of the games, and uh, free throws had you know, keep us in it. Then in the first overtime free throws, um, but also we had to stay on the boards. We had to rely on second shot. All right, Dion is being taken away from us. Not sure why. 86-85, the final in double overtime. Bradley will move on and play Canisius on Monday. And we are told that that game will likely be here in Peoria. But a great, uh, a great effort by Bradley. Uh, to come back and win this one in double overtime. It was just a great game all around, and, and you're right. Both teams played extremely well. I mean, that's a heartbreaker for whichever team has to win, but you're right. It's a cliche. Nobody has to hold their head down. Eastern Michigan, I mean, they're a young team. They are obviously on their way up, and uh, they are going to be a load next year with uh, juniors and sophomores. All right, Bradley now two wins away from heading to the Big Apple as you hear the chairman of the boards in the background, Frankie singing New York, New York. Bradley will play Canisius well, on Monday. They've got a lot of basketball to play before they go to New York, but uh, you know, it was an 82 when we heard this sound before when Bradley thought they should have been in the NCAA tournament, didn't make it, won the NIT. Now this year had a chance, thought they had a team that was good enough to make it, didn't win a couple of games late in the year that they probably could have won, didn't get picked as one of the at-large teams, didn't win the Valley Tournament, find themselves wrapped up in another NIT tournament that's proven to be just as good as always. So the Braves come up with the big free throws at the end. Deion Jackson, the two to win it. Billy Wright, a couple of big ones before that, too. Don't even try to, you know, pick... <laughs> what happened from about six minutes to go and over or in the regulation through the the final two overtimes we talked about how each possession both offensively and defensively had to be the crucial possession of the game and that's the way the game went I mean there were just so many people that stepped up and made great plays in the last 10 15 minutes of this game that uh, it's really tough to determine one player playing better than another Deion Jackson unofficially 27 to lead Bradley for Eastern Michigan. It was Brian Tolbert unofficially with 23, Theron Wilson with 20. A hard fought basketball game here tonight. The Braves come out victorious with a little bit of luck on their side. 86 85, the final. They move on to round two where they will play Canisius. For Roger Fegley, Lee Hall from Peoria. Hope you enjoyed the ball game, if not the outcome. Again, our final in Peoria. Bradley hangs on for an 86 85 double overtime win.
This has been a presentation of 25 Sports, Downstate Sports Leader.